Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in Zion. I really bless the Lord for each and every one of you. And I really, really thank God for your manifestation. And I'm also trusting the Lord that you had a wonderful, a glorious, a beautiful and an amazing week. Indeed, it has been such a beautiful time, you know, just being in the presence and that you are. <laughs> and it's an honor to continue to serve uh, the body. And I really love each and every one of you to God be the glory. We thank God, right, <laughs> for all that is happening upon creation. You know, the Bible declares, it says, do not be weary in well doing. It says that what you will reap if you do not faint. So you have to keep going regardless of what the situation is because you know why? The Lord who is faithful and true is bringing so many promises concerning your life and is bringing them to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I just want to read this word. You know, the Bible says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And it's a place where the Father is bringing liberty to so many things that we have walked in in times past because He wants us to walk in a greater level of freedom than we have, you know, in previous times. You know, I always say by the mercies of the living God that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And one of the things I want us to understand is the reason why sometimes I share this testimony money with us is not basically for you to live in my experience no not at all or to live with my experience or live from my experience not at all but it creates a, a you know it's 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 a presence that helps you to understand what you as well have been through that if the father was graceful to show me mercy he's willing to show you mercy at the same time so it's a place where the father is helping you to understand that you are not alone on the journey that you've walked in there are many you know the bible tells us to pray for our brothers and our sisters across you know across the globe and why is that that is because he says a lot of them they have what a lot of them have walked in this dimension and they have what they have not made it for some people they didn't make it no not at all for what the father is has done through you brought you out from some people didn't make it but by his grace you made it by his grace you got to the place the father intended for you to get to and that is why he's showing that mercy over your life at the same time so to god be the glory amen and amen so i'm sharing this scripture because the Bible tells us, it says here, I'm just going to read from Isaiah chapter 7. It says here from verse 1, When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, the king of Judah, king Rezin of Aram, and per per Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, they could not overpower it. No. So you cannot be overpowered. Anybody who tries to come against your family, anybody who tries to come against your business, everybody who tries to come against what the Father is in tending to you for you know in your life they cannot overpower you because of the presence of god that you are didn't the scripture says that nothing can separate you from the love of christ didn't the scripture say at the same time who can set it says that if god be for you who can be against you so i want us to look at this scripture the bible tells us you know i believe we have come to a time where we have to be sober and be vigilant so when i was speaking earlier on for what the father has shown mercy for you know, a lot of us, we've opened doors and we've opened, you know, we've opened doors and we've opened, you know, our, ourselves to realms that was not of the Father, you know, and it is in this place that the Lord is not looking and saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm condemning you for it. No, he wants to show mercy to help us to understand the ignorance that we have walked in so that we ourselves, we can what? We can walk in correction. So he's trying to close those doors so that what? The glory of the Lord might be made manifest in your life even so much more so we're reading from the book of isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19 all the way to 22 and this is what he says he says when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter should not a people inquire of their god why consult the dead on behalf of the living consult god's instruction and the testimony of warning if anybody does not speak according to this word they have no light of dawn distressed and hungry they will roam through 
through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward, they will curse their king and their God. And then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom and they will be thrust into utter darkness. So for some people, you can see why they basically curse God and blame God for everything. You know, a lot of people, they blame God. They blame God for this. They blame God for that. You know, sometimes you can be going through situations and you are blaming God and you're blaming God and you're blaming God. I'm not saying in this instance, this is always the reason. No, there are many dimensions to the word of God, but I am speaking particularly concerning Isaiah chapter eight and the reason for that. He says they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. And why are they cursing the king? And why are they cursing their God? The reason being is some of us, we have engaged, you know, the Bible tells us in 1 John and chapter 4 and verse 4, it said, test every, no, sorry, 1 John uh, chapter 1 all the way to verse 4. It tells us that what? We should test every spirit because the spirit of Antichrist have gone into the world. And in that way, we have to test every spirit. And for that reason, them. That is why it says that false prophets and all of this, they've gone out there into the world. So we have to be careful of who, you know, we receive messages from. That's why it says test every spirit. Do you see it? So now it says when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not the people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? So the father is helping you to understand that for some people in times past, you have gone to people who are basically, you know, they call themselves pastors, they call themselves prophets, they call themselves bishops, they call themselves all of these things but you don't understand the roots of where they are getting their messages from. Not everybody who opens a sanctuary is from God. Not everybody who calls themselves a pastor, apostle, you know, a prophet, a bishop is from God. Because the Bible says that, the, the, the you know, Satan goes about like who? An angel of light. So he goes about like an angel of light. And what does he do? He goes about to deceive so many people. Remember in the book of, in the old covenant, what happened? The Bible tells us that when Saul could not hear from God, what did he do? He eventually went to the house of a witch and to inquire from who? From Samuel, the word of God. Can you see that dimension? He said he went to the house of a witch to inquire from Samuel. So it was a witch who brought the ghost of Samuel up and then began to inquire the word of the Lord from who? From Samuel who was dead. <laughs> Do you get that point? So a lot of us, we've gone to inquire the word of the Lord from people who basically consult the dead on behalf of the living. Do you see it? So now this is the reason why some of you are enraged. Some of you, you curse the king. Some of you, you basically blame God. You curse God and all of these things. And for that reason, you know, all they see is gloom and darkness. And that is why you hear some people say, I, I don't think anything is anything good is going to come out of it. I don't think God has anything for me. I don't think anything, you know, is not going to work out for me. You know, they start to speak so negatively about themselves. And you wonder, are these truly the sons of God? Because you know why? In times past, they have gone to either of these people to inquire of the word of the Lord. So hence the reason why I'm encouraging us that, you know, I'm not, it's not, God is not, you know, it's not like, hey, I blame, you know, no, 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 no. He's just wanting to show mercy by acknowledging that, yes, I did one of these things in times past. Father, I'm sorry that I did it. And because of that reason for that, Lord, I am sorry I repent of it. And Father, now bring me back into the oneness that I am with you. And you will see the mercy of the Lord made manifest. Do you see it? The reason why I shared that with you, because I've been there, I, 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 you know, I've shared many a time, you know, where I was in, you know, where I went into, I shared that testimony, where I went into the synagogue of Satan and I'm there calling Jesus Christ, you know, I'm praying to God, worshiping the Father, not knowing that they themselves, they were actually what? They were walking with the dead. Do you see it? The, the foundation of that ministry, of whatever ministry they opened, was built on coffins and the dead. So every 
time, they are speaking prophetic words to people. They are receiving it from the dead. They are basically speaking it over the congregation, the words from dead people. So when they basically need to visit people in dreams, they use dead people to, so that's why you see people singing dead people in dreams because at some point, not all the time, but in most cases, when you see dead people in dreams, it's because you've gone and consulted with somebody who was ministering with dead people and for that reason consulted the dead on your behalf and now they are bringing messages through dead people into your dreams do you see it and you say well that was my mother that was my father you know i i trust them no because the bible tells us in the book of ecclesiastes that the dead have nothing else to do under the sun because once they are gone their love their emotions everything is gone they have no part to play under the sun. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, that's what the Bible declares. So you now you can begin to understand it. So for the sanctuary, uh, uh, you know, for that synagogue of Satan I was in, this was how they communicated with their members. This is how they basically, fam you know, that is how familiar spirit is released. That is how monitoring spirit is released. Do you see it? Because they, they come, they give you, oh, I have a word of the Lord for you. I have a word of the Lord for you. And you basically speak this word of the Lord and that brings people even into more captivity rather than into freedom. Do you see? This is why I always encourage people to test every spirit. Take it to the Lord. Let him affirm what has been spoken. So why, the reason why you call it a prophetic word is either it happens the following day, the same day, that very moment, or it is waiting to come to pass. And the Lord will grant you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Do you see it? That's why the book of, uh, I believe, uh, First Thessalonians tells us not to what? Not to treat prophetic words with contempt. Don't, don't treat it anyhow. No, not at all. But test them. So don't reject. If somebody, you know, if somebody that you know is walking with the Lord, don't reject those words, but take it to the Father and let him confirm. And if you're not sure about the person at the same time, take it to the Lord and the Lord will help you to understand this mystery. Do you see it? So this is where the Father is helping us to understand that the reason why majority of you, you are seeing dead people in dreams, bringing you messages in dreams. The reason why majority of you are cursing God, blaming God for your circumstances. The reason why majority of you, you're speaking so negatively to yourself is because you have gone and visited somebody who inquired on behalf of the dead to give you a message. That is why I always say, trust in the Lord, not the apostle, not the prophet, not all of those things. Trust in the Lord. It is the Lord. <laughs> when you trust in the Lord, it's so beautiful. So when somebody brings you a word, Father, this is the word that I've been given. Is this from you? The Lord will say, yes, I sent that person to you. Do you see it? And if it's not a, the word of the Lord, the Father will tell you to reject it straight away. Do you see it? <laughs> this is what you begin to understand. I remember there was a time, you know, I, I believe I've shared when I was in a relationship in times past, when, you know, the Lord was helping me to understand, you know, uh, the dimension of uh, 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 the book of Genesis. And what happened in the book of Genesis? It says sometimes the word that your wife gave you was not of you, was not of me. Hence why curses were being released. So now you can begin to see it that sometimes we have to what? We have to check within ourselves and say, Lord, this word is this for you or is this just my emotions or am I just wanting to be here father if it is of you help me Lord because you can see it the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 that the word was confirmed with what with signs so it's not basically like you're going there asking for a sign all the time no but the Lord will confirm his word with you one way or the other so he says, when someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter should not the people inquire of God can you see? So the Lord is basically saying, why are you going to all of these places? You can inquire of me. I will send the person to you to give the word and I will give you the word myself if I have to. So why then do these people continue to consult the dead on behalf of the living when they have no place on earth anymore because they're gone? 
So that's why the Bible tells us, consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed. So you can see the reasons why some people are distressed and hungry, roaming about the land, that when they're famished, they will become enraged and looking up, they will curse the king and their God. And they will look to the earth. So that's why everything they see upon the earth is gloom, 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 dark, dark. Nothing will happen. Nothing, you know, this earth is not going to get better. This world is not going to get better. You know, everything is nothing is going to get better. It's going to keep getting worse. It's going to keep getting worse. It's going to keep getting worse. You know, that's, look at the gloom they keep speaking again and again. <laughs> why? Because for some of them, they have gone to consult the spirit of the dead. So that's why I've been encouraging each and every person. Let the Lord guide you. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord basically confirm his word with you. So for many of you, this is the dimension and the reason why you have been speaking against God and you have been what? Speaking against yourself. So no matter how much they tell you to speak positive about yourself, all you see is gloom and darkness. It cannot, it can I don't think it can be, you know, I, I don't think I can get better. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do that. You know, and the Lord is like, you're so much more. Don't you know that you're amazing? You're perfect in me. You and I, we are one. The perfection of the holiness of my name is the glory that is inside of you. I'm about to take you into a new dimension, the dimension of my glory where you see my name manifest in you and all creation will come to glorify me because you and I have become one. You're perfect in all of my ways because I am the way, the truth, and the life and who you are in me. The earth, the world, all creation is yet to comprehend it. That is why I said eyes have not seen, ears have neither heard. You know, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for you because what I prepared for you is far greater than what you can think of. So I am here to lift you higher because of the dimension of my name in you. But I want you to see yourself exactly as you see me because you and I we are one and the perfection of who I am is what is manifesting through you so the glory of my name is revealed through you because I'm here to bless you with every spiritual blessing because you have already been blessed with that so I want to manifest that blessing through you so it is time I am asking you to sit with me and let me reveal the plans my plans my will concerning your life let me reveal it so together we can rejoice and celebrate over the goodness of the words that is being spoken over your life. Did I not say to you that in the beginning was the word, the word was a God and the word is God? You are the word in the beginning. You are the word that has now been made flesh and that is why all creation is glorifying the word that you have become because you're not here to be small. You're here to be great for you are a king and a priest upon all creation and that is why my name is resonating in every dimension of your being because at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are God and that is who I am because this is what my son prayed for each and every one of you. He said, Father, make us one as you and I are one. So acknowledging everything that is in Christ, that is in you, Christ is God and that is who you are. You are Christ, you are God, you are Holy Ghost because your spirit is one with him and it is in this dimension that the fulfillment of my blessing is revealed in you and the glory of my name to be manifested all around you. Look at you. You are a river of living water poured out upon all creation to be refreshed because you are the restoration that is upon creation. Yes, they are coming to you to be restored. So for everything that you've gone through, I'm using you, I'm using your testimony, your life and every type, every, every dimension of you to bring restoration upon all creation. So it is in this hour that I'm glorifying you, but I need you to come out of the negativity to see who you are in me because you are far more, far more than what you're speaking out of your mouth. So I want you to affirm the good things, open the word up and pick out the good things, the promises that I have promised you and speak it over yourself and you begin to see the transformation that is happening right from within your heart to be revealed upon all creation in glory. Amen. Amen. That is who you are in Jesus' mighty name. And that is the dimension of the glory of the Father concerning you. So let us share this prayer together. You know, to God be the glory. If we can share this prayer together. If any of you has gone in this dimension, you know, because a lot of you, you might not know who that person is. You know, so you basically, that's why I said we don't treat all these people, you know, apostles, pastors, and all of those things. We don't, you know, we can, we can so much believe what it is that they're saying that we can turn them into an idol.
<laughs> do you see it? We can turn them into an idol. You know, and it's just in the same way. If anybody gives me a word, I give God the glory for the word. But what do I do? Upon receiving the word, I take it to the Father. Lord, I lay it down before you. So, Father, this is the word that this person has spoken. Affirm it with me. And the Lord affirms it and says, it is me. And in that, I receive the word. And for sometimes, if it's not the word of the Father, I just bless the person. So, you can begin to see in that dimension mention but it is the the point of it is taking it to the father first because you test every spirit and if any spirit does not confess that jesus has come in the flesh is the spirit of antichrist you see it <laughs> to god be the glory so let us share this prayer together in oneness just repeat after me father in the name of jesus i repent for every place to consult mediums or anyone who has consulted mediums and spirits who whisper and mutter for my sake. I repent for not consulting you. So therefore, I renounce the agreement with it. For that reason, I renounce the distress, the hunger, the rage, and for the blaming of kings and the blaming of God. I repent of it and I renounce it in Jesus' mighty name. And everywhere that I have seen only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, let it be restored into the lights that I am. That all I see is light. Every situation, I see the light of the Father and the purposes of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So, Father, I just bless each and every person who has shared this prayer. I just break the powers of the mediums. I break the powers of the spirits who whisper and mutter. Every familiar spirit and every monitoring spirit that has been attached to these individuals, I serve them all a divorce decree over your people that no longer and every spirit of the grave that is releasing dead people to come and visit them in dreams. I judge the powers of the grave and every spirit that is behind servicing these things, we release, we serve a divorce decree upon them in Jesus' mighty name. I now take authority over every altar. I cry against the altars that is servicing these purposes. Oh, altar, altar. Oh, the high priest that is servicing you, I fire them. Let that altar altar be crushed down and let the ashes on it completely be poured out. So every sacrifice that was laid on it concerning your people, I command it right this minute to be destroyed. It was for this reason that Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. So every works of the devil that was done concerning your people over this, I destroy them all in Jesus mighty name. It says now, it says no longer will you be yoked into slavery. So I declare by the authority of the living word that they will no longer be yoked into slavery in Jesus' mighty name because it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. I release freedom over your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. You all are the blessedness of the Father and I thank God for each and every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Go forth in the triumphant victory that you are and I bless the Lord for your dimension in glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. I love you.